Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, May 19th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. The DA did an interesting test creating a zip file with two malicious files. First of all, the ACAR signature, which is just the signature used to debug antivirus. And secondly, with the well-known tool Mimikatz. And then he ran it through various uh, antivirus engines and actually also uploaded to VirusTotal. And uh, turned out that it's a little bit hit and miss uh, which signature trick most tools just sort of looking at it uh, quickly seem to trigger actually on the ACAR signature which I believe also showed up first and it's a very typical behavior that we also have like a network intrusion detection where whatever signature triggers first is the one that really matters that then creates the alert of course the trick here is that yes you know the file is potentially malicious but seeing the ACAR uh, a signature tracker do you think hey this may just have been a antivirus test file or such maybe from a vulnerability scan or a pen test and you may ignore it not notice that there's actually additional more malicious payloads lurking in the same file and yesterday I mentioned how Edison Mail for iOS uh, did uh, mix up users or give users access to other users' accounts. Well, looks like uh, Edison Mail wasn't the only one this weekend to mix up users. Outlook 365 apparently had a problem as well. Now, doesn't look quite as severe as Edison Mail, but still, if you did perform searches on your Outlook 365 account, you may have retrieved data from other organizations outlook 365 accounts so interesting bug uh, not sure exactly how widespread it was appears to have affected only a few users according to microsoft but uh, really not a lot uh, published about the exact extent of this problem and a couple of years ago, Apple introduced a magic pairing for Bluetooth devices that use Apple's proprietary chips. Now, what magic pairing really means is that you only need to pair the Bluetooth device, like your AirPods, once with one of your Apple devices and then other Apple devices that are using the same account are able to automatically connect to the device and it's pretty easy to switch from one device to another. Now, since this protocol is proprietary, there wasn't a lot known about how it actually works and what the security aspects are of this extension to Bluetooth pairing. And we now got a paper from a couple of researchers in Germany at the Technical University of Darmstadt that actually reverse engineered magic pairing and documented how the protocol works. Good news, well, the protocol seems secure and seems to be pretty well designed. The bad news as so often is in the details, in particular in the implementation of the protocol in Apple's various Bluetooth stacks. The researchers found a number of different vulnerabilities. Now, none of them, as far as I can tell, is a remote code execution vulnerability. All of them pretty much lead to a crash of the Bluetooth stack. So, well, a denial of service attack. But of course, uh, this may just be a hint at other vulnerabilities that are lurking within uh, this software. And uh, given the closed nature of the protocol and the software, it's of course not that easy to find vulnerabilities. But that's not the only Bluetooth issue that we have to talk about today. There is actually sort of a larger uh, problem that was also disclosed that's called the bias attack or Bluetooth impersonation attacks. And the problem with that attack is it actually is a problem in the Bluetooth standard, not so much in the implementation. Now, when two Bluetooth devices are authenticated, they are sharing a 
key with each other. The way the bias attack works is that an attacker would inject themselves in a connection, would claim to be one side of the connection, a trusted device, and then would downgrade from bilateral to unilateral authentication. So only one device has to authenticate and then would switch contacts and actually basically requiring, hey, the device it has to authenticate is the other side. It's not the attacker. So what happens now is is that the victim authenticates, the attacker no longer has to authenticate, and with that, the attacker can actually impersonate the other device and also play man-in-the-middle attacks because essentially the attacker can play this game both ways in both directions. Now, they demonstrated the attack against 28 unique Bluetooth chips, which probably is uh, sort of all the Bluetooth chips that are out there in 30 different devices. In their paper, they suggest some fixes and they also disclosed uh, these issues to the Bluetooth working group back in December. But since this is really sort of more part of how Bluetooth works, this will actually require sort of a change in the standard to fix this vulnerability. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.